it's um, time to look at something very, very important about what I would consider to be uh, a little leaven, amen, if I can say it like that. Um, and I'm not trying to say it's like, you know, so crazy. It's just, uh, it is an uh, element of understanding a place where pride tries to sneak in. And pride tries to sneak in and cause us to plateau in the spirit. plateau in the spirit by assuming we've reached all there is in the Lord. But the Bible says that his ways are past finding out. Job says, who can probe the depths of our God? And then like the Psalms reaches into these kinds of ideas about how far you can go with God. Limitlessness is the kind of the, the idea that you get. I'm not sure what version you're reading, hopefully KJV, but um, limitless, who can probe the depths of it? You know, this wonder, unending wonder, unending joy. Uh, Smith Wigglesworth said it like this. He says, oh, the glory of God. There's nowhere to go but up. There, the, the chances of us grabbing hold of the grace of God in such a way that we're going to receive of him in such a way that we now know what we're fighting for. Now we remember who we are in Christ. Now we have identity in Christ that is not just on paper and gives us a warm fuzzy, but something costly happened. Something like an invitation to something very costly in the supernatural happened to let us know where our cross could be if we start to lay hold deeper than deeper because his ways are past finding out. We don't want to plateau and say, I have a testimony. My life is doing just fine right now. This kind of a thing is 11, and it will not be what we need to be to be inside of nation-changing faith. Nation-changing faith is when we've graduated past more than one of these situations. More like one or two or three. You get in past two or three, like major idols coming out of your heart, major things you lay down, your personality under this certain light or whatever. I've seen so many different places of compromise. It's quite alarming and it's quite scary, honestly. I see people who are so strong compromise over the most ridiculous things. And I've seen that knocking on my door. I know what that feels like, so I'm not saying, you know, I'm not I'm just saying this is a this is a reality that we must examine and say no. First of all, we gotta get our feet out of the mud, shake off the mud, hose off our shoes, cleanse our hands, you sinners, and purify our hearts, you double-minded, and be solid in at least the beginning conviction and say, Lord, here's a clear canvas. Oh, wait a minute. I found out there's somebody who's offended at me. Leave your gift at the altar. Don't worship me yet, says the Lord. Go deal with these issues and make your slate clean. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. Purify your heart, you double-minded. And then come to the altar. Let your worship be for real. And then the Almighty starts to speak to us deeper and deeper about further places that we actually can't go legitimately, unmistakably, reality in the Lord. This is what the Lord is calling us into, without a doubt. And uh, I, I, I've seen people who, under certain lights, they have their guards up. Nothing can go on. Their heart is guarded, like the Bible tells us. Guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it is the issues of life. But when your heart changes, your words change. Your spirit changes, and your countenance changes. Like David Wilkerson has a video, you should watch it, called You're Changing. Little by little, the world is inching into your heart. You're changing. Your words are not as sharp as they used to be. Your convictions are not as absolute as they used to be. You're changing. Something's happening. It's breaking my heart to watch you. You're not what you once were. You used to be something. And I've seen it happen so quickly. I've seen one of the strongest touches of the Holy Spirit that I've seen in this day and age change into something so wicked so quickly. It's so quick. It's so subtle. Let's make it plain, folks. The devil is continuously lying, 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 lying. And the, the, the dude does not take breaks. He's constantly trying to trip you up, constantly trying to throw bananas on your path, constantly trying to throw bricks in your way, constantly trying to tell you to turn around, turn around, you're, no, you're not doing anything anyway. Nothing's happening anyway, says the devil. Go back to where you started from. Wasn't the world more fun for you? Wasn't Egypt more fun for you? Go back. It doesn't matter if God opened up the Red Sea and did this mighty deliverance for you and set your captive tushy free and set you free and put your feet upon a rock. It doesn't matter about that, says the devil. Go back. You're not, you're not making any ground anyway. You 
you've already, you've already got there. You've gone far enough, as far as you could ever go in the Lord. But the Bible says His ways are limitless. His ways are past, uh, past finding out. It's, a, it's an idol to say, I've arrived. It's, it's leaven to your spirit if you're trying to go for nation-changing faith. We cannot watch each other. We have to watch the Son of God because in Him is the life. He's the one that is the anchor of our soul. We don't want to have fellowship with other people about God. We want to have fellowship with God through Jesus Christ. And this is the rock that we must remember where we're cut from. We must remember our foundations. The way we talked when everything was absolutely clear. When we know we're pondering the path of life so the seduction spirit cannot come knocking on our door and make us talk in a way that makes us look like our countenance has fallen off the, off the face of the earth. His ways are past finding out. Limitless. Wonders without end. And then we sell it all out for a, for a connection that makes no sense at all. It is unbelievable how quick this thing comes and snares us. Body of Christ. God called you to be a leader. God called you to be a servant. God called you to be a servant leader. He's called you to be in humility. He's called us to be kings and priests. Broken and humble before the Lord. Waiting for spiritual reality so you can rise up like King David and knock out armies of the enemy. Legitimately, where all you did was show up with a pot and you broke it. Jars of clay, you smash the jars of clay, you light the little fire, and then you yell and watch the Lord turn the enemies of God against each other. You didn't do anything except obey the word of the Lord. And you as Gideon's army uh, won by, like 300 against an army of thousands, 36,000. So that no flesh could possibly take glory for this miracle that God did as the enemies of God come down. There's a lot of enemies of God standing up, laughing in the face of the church. Because we've fallen for their stupid snares. We've fallen for their, for their stupid plateaus. We've fallen for their, their false versions of Christianity. And they're laughing at us as we get nothing done. As they continue to rise up and rise up and change laws in this nation. And, and spitting in the face of God every second of the way laughing at us and now we're intimidated then because we don't want to offend them rather we don't want to offend the Holy Ghost if we get the right spirit we're going to understand exactly how broken heartedly be able to take this nation back for the glory of God I don't want to burst anybody's bubble but I've heard that Donald Trump was the saving grace of America he's not he's our president and we must pray for him we must respect leadership but the leadership of the nation is what it is in biblical, biblical understanding of leadership, they fluctuate mostly in darkness. God knows our president, and I'm grateful for whoever God puts there because we get exactly what we deserve. According to the salt and light of his people in that nation is exactly what will be revealed in the position, in the mentality, and the content of what's in the White House. If you don't like that, it's because the church is still not pounding hard enough on the gates of glory to say, Lord, we're done playing games, Lord. We're done playing where we, we're done plateauing. We just remembered all of a sudden. It dawned on us all over again, Lord God Almighty, that your ways are past finding out, and we're just wasting your time. I'd like to get to a point where we don't have to st stop sinning, that we don't have time to even think about sin. Because we're so lost in how the, the high call, and we're so lost in the high cost, and the heights of worship, the high and lofty, highly exalted. We're, we're, not, we're not looking at the high dangers of sin, we're looking at the high and the exalted. You look at Jesus and you're not going to have a sin problem. Everything is so clear. Every tiny little subtle trick of the devil looks like a monster that you can get a gun and just blow its head off in two seconds flat. That's what it looks like when you're walking in the street. You literally just want to laugh at the trick of the devil. You're like, you've got to be kidding me. I can't believe that used to take me down. I can't believe that used to take me down. Now look at me. <laughs> Laughing in the face of the devil where he used to laugh at us. The body of Christ needs to remember where the still small voice is. We have to let that voice build and be the overall ruling factor in our life. Hallelujah. And embolden God's people because of what God has done in our life. It won't cause pride. If you got your eyes on God, you cannot be prideful. But you can be bold to say, I 
see the Lord. I've seen the victory. I've seen the mountaintops of God. And I found out all over again that his ways are past finding out. Hallelujah. And I don't want to waste my time plateauing on things because people applaud me there. Like they applauded King Saul who ended up going to hell. It would be better that he never even found God in the first place. But he was anointed of God. And he turned away and ended up going to the witch doctor because the voice of the Holy Ghost was not real anymore. But that's what we do. Instead of going to the Holy Ghost, we go to Hollywood. Hollywood is the devil. Hollywood is the, is the voice of the witch at Endor. Proving that we've lost sight of the vision that God gave us. And forgotten what rock we've been cut from. forgot that his ways are past finding out, meaning it's an endless growth, meaning endless focus, endless concentration on the things that we know and the things that he's going to show us further to deepen our stance, to convict us so deeply that we would never even consider monkeying around to pass any line of the lane that we're called to be in. Straight and narrow way to lead us to life and few there be that find it. So we don't risk Ending up finding out that everything that we did was like these people who were flabbergasted to find out, Lord, 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 I served you so strongly. And he says, I, do I know you? Do I, know? I don't remember. I don't remember talking to you. Well, I remember talking to you, but I don't remember you listening. I was talking and you were grieving. You had your heels on the dashboard as though you conquered the whole everything that you ever wanted to. Somebody praised you, somebody called you a prophet, and you forgot to listen to my voice anymore. The voice of compromisers has caused you to compromise against me. You forgot the concentration of growing and growing and growing in God. Brethren, if we're not growing, we might not be going. You've got to be sober about this and remember our rock of Jesus Christ. Not in only word, but in deed as well. Hallelujah.